In this video, we're going to do a match analysis for one of our members. He is at the far end at the moment, and he has sent this video in, and we're going to focus on three main areas. We're going to focus on split step and preparation, and why it's so important to be faster around the court. Then we're going to look at the bandeja, where you should be aiming that, and how you should be hitting that. And then we're going to look at how you and your partner can approach to be most effective, and we're going to finish with a really good paddle point. This player is currently in our intermediate roadmap, so we have roadmaps on the platform platform for each of the different levels of what they should be following in order to improve their game. And so this is pitched at an intermediate level, but if you are more advanced or you are a beginner, a lot of the topics that we talk about will be applicable to you and can also help you improve your game. So let's dive immediately into the split step and why that is an important part of your game. You're going to see one of the players here serving and he uses a split step quite nicely when coming forward. So one of the advantages of coming from tennis is that you are used to doing a split set when your opponent contacts the ball. And here you see the server who is from a tennis background. You can see that he hits, comes in, and then that little bounce on his toes, which you can see that his opponent contacts and he just has a small step there, it means that he's able to adapt. Now, his partner, on the other hand, off this next shot, you'll see that there, there isn't a split set there. There's a slight movement of the, of the left foot, which we can see there, but, but there's not actually a, a split step. And therefore, to get into a position to hit this ball, you see that he's just ever so slightly late moving into that position, and therefore would often change his shot. Now this shot I would normally recommend to try and hit a gancho, but if you have been a little bit late with your split step, then you can often find that you don't quite get into position. And so now giving another example of the players on, on this side of the court is again, this, this idea of a split step. You can see the player, he's hit the serve, he's coming in. There's a mini bounce there, there's a mini bounce. You can actually see really nicely that he is on his toes. The heels have come off the ground, so he is in an athletic position. He is in the right position to be moving fast after this. The split step would probably help a slightly more defined split step, but you can see here that as the player is just contacting the ball, watch both of these players. There's the feet here and the feet here. Now, we're going to just rewind. And as you can see, when it comes forward, there isn't really a split from either player. You see, and, and both, both heels for the player on the left and, and one heel definitely, and then both heels are on the ground here as this shot is being hit. And therefore, when they try and cover this ball that, that has gone into this zone here, it means that they both had to really kind of awkwardly lunge and, and try and get into that position quickly. And, and a split step, a little bounce on the toes, would have made that so much easier for them to reach that ball. And while we're looking at the split step from the serve, I think this is a another example where once the player hits the serve and they move in towards the net, so often a, a, a conversation that we have with players, they say, oh, but look, we've got this angle of fence that the opponent can hit into. And I always say, look, if you split step and you are fast and react, then really you would cover all of this. And if they go for an angle that is really small, then they've hit a really high risk but good shot and you just say well played and, and you move on. The difficulty comes when, when we look at this now and we see the player here not split stepping. You see here he's, he's planted his left leg and there hasn't been a split step and therefore the movement to get to this ball has been slow. When really, when you move in like this, you want to, and we're just watching the feet that are gonna go into this zone here. He moves forwards, there should be a split there instead of a planting of the feet. And therefore he would have been faster, much faster to move to that and probably would have cut that angle off because what would have happened was 
he would have split here, taken a step across to cut the trajectory of that ball and therefore would not have exposed that fence. And, and so again, you know, that split step coming in when your opponent contacts the ball is absolutely crucial, particularly um, on the serve here. And we're just gonna use one more example of the, the split step and this time from the back of the court because it is so important from the back of the court but I think hopefully we've got the message across now that every time your opponents contact you want to split step. Here is a great example they've contacted and I'm just going to watch these feet here and and also from from the shot here we're going to see um, is there is there going to be a split step from both sides and the contact is there and you can see that there isn't. And we've got both heels on the ground here. We've got one step heel down, one, one toe slightly up, but you see, and now, so when this ball goes down here, there has to be a desperate lunge to get to that ball. When really, if it's a split step, it's maybe one or two small fast steps and therefore it completely changes the type of shot that you want to hit. So that split step, Every time your opponent's contact, small bounce on your toes. And, and let's just finish with a really good example. And for the good example, we're gonna come back to our, our tennis player here. And, and immediately I'm, I'm looking at this zone here and, and really watching as that ball is contact, that bounce there. You can see there's a little step, a bounce, both toes, and then ready to move. Even though the ball hasn't gone to him, it's gone to his partner, he is again, look, and you can just see, again, we're about to see another split step here. There's that bounce on the toes. And you see, and, and you can look at the difference between him and his partner now. And this is something where tennis really helps in this regard that tennis players are used to doing this. You can see the bounce on the left and you can see no bounce on the right. And therefore, the player on the left is gonna be so much faster to that ball. And again, it's another one that you can almost see the player here. He's had to lean back in order to get back for that ball as opposed to using the split step. And, and again, the, the player on the on the left here, again, using a really nice fast split step, which is gonna help him make sure that he is in that position for that ball. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that I think we have made this point now, and I make it a lot when it comes to our community and our members, that the footwork and the split step are absolutely crucial. I know here we've hammered the point of a split step, but I promise you, if you are not currently doing a split step, you need to include that in your game if you want to be faster. And this is something we cover a lot when we're in person with clinics or we're working with players online, coaching online or following through our programs. They are often not doing the split step and don't realize it. So if you can watch one of your own footage to see if you're doing it, but if you're not, you absolutely must. Now let's have a look at the Bandeka. So to start, we're gonna look at some good examples of the Bandeka, what we're looking for here. And the player, this is our member. I'm just gonna put him on the spot here, but he is the one whose videos we're focusing on. So we're gonna mainly focus on his Bandeka, but we will see um, another couple of examples here. So um, looking at this one down the middle, and this is really nice that this follows on from the split step because in order to get in a good position, you really need, and, and there was a small bounce there, so we got a little bit of a split step in position, but you really, to be fast for these bandekas, you need, really need to make sure that you are doing, um, doing this split step. And coming across here is important that you are able to communicate this with your partner. So the first one, um, this, is definitely, this is definitely the left court players, he's come across nicely. A little bit open with the shoulders and it is a little bit of a short bounce where, where, where this ball goes, um, but generally pretty well executed. Um, and then the recover back, which is really important. And then this one, he's come across here and this action here is slightly more vibra. You can see that the racket is behind the head. He's, he's actually a little bit more stretched. And um, this could have been potentially a gancho from the partner, but it's absolutely fine for the player to come across and to play this. Um, and he's played that nicely into the corner. Now, had he hit that 
in the same location as the previous one, he would have been in a little bit of trouble to recover. But as he's hit that nicely deep into the corner, he's actually uh, managed to hit a really good, good shot there and recovered nicely back to the net. So that is a good example. And another good example here is, is the lob down the middle again. And this for me is such a simple bandeja and, and honestly very low risk and actually really effective. You see it's put the ball behind and this player at the back is, is not so confident with the glass. You can see by the way he, he stands there and, and is almost watching as opposed to moving. But here, you know, the target area, and I'm just gonna rewind this forward so that I can have a space. If you can hit your bandeja to bounce here and really hit any of this section, of the glass or fence, so the back half of that fence or the front part of that glass, what will mean, it means that the ball will go behind your opponent and, and end up being right back there and very difficult to defend. And either you do this where you try and turn and you have to move more into the corner or you get forced right back against that back glass. And it's just such a simple bandeja. It doesn't have to be loads of spin. He's done a little block here, quite a high ball. I mean, he is quite tall anyway, but that is a, a high contact. But because it's gone down into that zone, it's actually been really, really effective. So um, that's something that, you know, whether you play on the left or on the right, it would be the same that you're aiming for, for this side here. If you're aiming the bandeja from the right hand side, that can be a really, really effective shot. And it's very low risk. So as we increase in difficulty and risk, you can see here that, that the lob has been played from, well, from the middle, down the middle. And, and in this position here, I often see players taking a really risky option of going into this zone here. Now, I would say that he's done this quite effectively in this point. Um, he's hit this, hit this well enough that it is bounced off both glasses and it's given him time to come back. But if you notice when, when you're hitting there, and this is what a lot of players do, is they, they hit their bandaka down the line and you can see that he now has like this much court to cover. And it can be really difficult. If you don't hit that glass and you don't hit it well and it bounces short, for example, then your opponent has, you know, lots of easy options here. A good option for this tactically would be to either play it soft down the middle or change that direction. And, and in here, you can either go in here, you can go in here. This player on the right hand, uh, our right, he's actually on the left at the far end, has, has come forward a bit there. But um, that would be the, the safer option here because you can see as he's hit now, he's actually pretty much on the tee and then he's got to cover three quarters of the court. But like I said, it hit one glass, then it hit the other glass. And by the time the player had contacted, he'd done a great job of recovering his net position back to here. But you just got to be really conscious of that when you were hitting your bandeja down the line. And just as we talk about the bandeja down the line, I don't want to say that you never hit it because there, there are times and there are times when it's more sensible. Like here, for example, we're hitting the bandeja down the line from, from this position. And you see, this position here is very different to the previous position where you're over that tee. Because from here, you now have a choice to recover. And we've got lots and lots of videos on our platform, but also on, on YouTube of where to recover to. But if you hit down the line, you've got to just take this small adjustment here and his partner is gonna make their way here. If you play cross, you're also in a not a bad position. You've got to make your way there and then your partner stays where they are. But, but from this position here, it's fine. The difficulty was this one having to cover all that way across here. But you'll see now is a good example. They've played that and they head down the line off the side glass again, buying lots of time to come in. And that is actually not a bad time to play down the line. You could have gone either way, but, but generally I would say most of your balls should go cross with, uh, I would just say a percentage of about 60% cross, I would say. And then I would say probably 30 to 35% down the middle and then 
you know, a five, maximum 10% uh, down that line. And so the final look of the Bandeka, and this is where tennis players are at a distinct um, disadvantage. And there are some good things like the split step and the volleys and the coordination, but there are others that are quite difficult. To play your Bandeka from this position now, and, and I'm just gonna circle where the contact is with the ball, and it's over the head, very much like a tennis serve. It's physically impossible to, to keep that low. And, and this is just something that, that tennis players, they need to, need to learn is this contact to the side with a little bit of slice, because here you can see that ball, not, like it had good depth, like we've mentioned before, you can see the ball is, is just about to bounce down into that corner there, but the idea of that keeping down is, is, is very difficult. And you see what's happened is the player has done a good job to follow it round, and now as they're hitting, so if you look at their, when they're contacting the ball, they are in line with the second post, which is actually where you should be when it comes to your net position anyway. So, and that was given to him by the fact that the contact was too high and the ball was hit too hard off that bandeja. So um, that is a slightly more technical thing. You've got to work out how to open with the racket face, hit a little bit more slice and hit a little bit more down side to the body. And if you are a tennis player, this is almost certainly um, something that you will need to work on. And I had to work on it myself when I came from tennis, um, but it's, it's something that will be really, really important for Bandeka, for Vibra, for all of your smashes, um, if you want to be able to keep it low at the other end. So we discussed the Bandeka, the direction you should be aiming, where you should be returning to, and what technically you should be trying to do to keep the ball low at the other end. Before we go on to the approach and looking at where you should be approaching and how you should be getting to net, I just want to let you know that our member here has sent in this video to have his match analysed. We also do this on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. So he sent many dozens of videos of his shot in so that we can analyze those. And it's something you could sign up today on our free trial, put your videos in our community today, and myself and the other coaches will give you tips on how you can improve that part of your technique so you can actually play better paddle. Now let's have a look at the approach shot and how you best can take the net. So we're going to start the approach at net with a few good ways of doing it. So, so what are good examples? And, and I really like this example here because, well, the first attempt, and I would say this is very another, another tennis player trait, and I feel like tennis players are getting a bit of a bashing here, but um, when a tennis player comes to a paddle court, they often are trying to net rush. And so here's an example. He hits a ball that is just generally to his opponent, just to the volley, and he's taken these steps inside here. And this is just an unnecessary risk. Um, but here the volley has gone short, and this is one of my favorite ways of getting a short ball. And what a lot of players would do here is try and blast through their opponents. But what you should do, and they've done exactly the right thing, is just to pop that over the head and then come forward as a pair. And for me, that is, the best way to come to net, you get an easy ball, you hit the lob, you come up as a pair, you've got the most amount of time available. And, and that's really what we should be looking for when it comes to taking the net. Another really nice example of, of coming to net is when you may hit a lob, and your opponent moves back to hit the overhead, which at a recreation level is very common that they may hit it. And you can see here, he's, he's actually going in, in the wrong direction after the lob because it was a good lob. And, and so now what the player done, has done at this end is instead of hitting to the volleyer, he's hit to the person at the back and then they come forward together. And I, I really like that because it's just a simple, again, it's another simple way you've hit a good lob and the way that you can be rewarded for that is then to hit down to the player at the back. So many players would hit this to the wrong person. They would hit to the other person who is at net, but it's really important to hit to that player at the back and then make your, make your way in. And again, a really nice way to take the net.
I wanted to show a couple of examples that, that may not have come from the lob. So the last, last couple did, but here, this is this point where the, the smash was a bit bouncy. We talked about this on the Bandeka. The player has come forward. Now, now, if you are in that situation, as soon as your partner is moving forward to this ball, this player should be ready to come up. They may not have necessarily moved up with them, but they should definitely be ready because you're in a situation here where you're going to be mismatched. You're going to have one player at the net and one at the back. So you should definitely be ready. And then when they hit to this point, you can see here now that he's in, he's in this line and, and probably slightly too close, but he was brought there with the momentum. This is where this, uh, this partner really has got to come up to try and block the gaps because you can see otherwise you've just got huge gaps um, on this side of the court. And so it's really important for, for this player and, and just generally, if you've got one of the players that comes forward because of what's happened within the point, you try and join them if you can. And here we'll see another example of this. So a ball, ball bouncing short, this player, being a tennis player has gone for the chip and charge. He's hit a nice Chiquita though. You see that the contact is below net height, which means the ball is gonna pop up. And, and this is probably something you need to really be aware of. If you are playing with a tennis player, you need to be aware that th this will be their move, that they will, they will spring into action at an opportunity. And so to come in here, and, and you can see that he really almost took the net position there. It's about the second post. Now, this, this volley, could have could have been better e either one of these but if you're in a situation like this where your partner's come forward you're hitting an exchange of two volleys you absolutely have an opportunity here to take the net position so you've got to move forward with them to cover those gaps because otherwise and this is what happened you know the opponents are, are scrambling you can see our, our member down the other end he's, he's scrambling to stay in this point he's just blocking it back and he's ended up winning the point mainly because the partner didn't come up and cover the net. So if one of the players goes up close, whether they've chipped or charged, they got there the right way. If the ball is then played back to them and you have a split second of time, then you really should try and join them if you can. So there we talked about the approach, a good way to come in or a couple of good ways to come in and then a couple that are not so good and really how you and your partner can cover those gaps. Now we're going to finish with the last piece of analysis on a really good paddle point from all four players here. And as we go through this, I'm going to talk about why this is such a nice, a nice paddle point. I mean, it even starts from the beginning. It's a nice serve down the tee. The returner has hit a good shot. The player now has then got this space open in the corner. And that is a really good combination. Either serve towards the glass and then volley down the middle, or like has happened here, serve down the middle and then volley to the gap. And so that's exactly what, what has happened here. Got the, got the space, come back, hit a really nice bandeja, recovered the net well. You can see the, the tennis player at the back itching, itching to come in, but they haven't, he, there was no change of direction there, you see. So, so played a good bandeja. This ball came up here, and this is an acceptable time. This, this is being hit by this player now. This is an acceptable time to, to change the direction. Yeah, rather than changing the direction and, and leaving yourself exposed by, by doing that, and he actually played the ball first. He's now in, in the correct position here and it was only a step across for his partner. So that was well played. That was a good time to change the direction. And now, you know, they were forcing to keep the net. The players lobbed, they came forward together. That was great movement. As a coach, I'm really happy to, happy to see that. Both these players have made their way, way back. You see, he made his way back because his partner was also at the back of the court. So that 
also makes me really happy to see that. Players come forward off a short ball. He could have gone with his partner a little bit faster. As it is, he, you can see here, he's trying to hold his own. They've got to find a way here at this end. Either he comes forward and he joins his partner, or he may hit a soft Chiquita in which tie, in which case it gives this player time to go back. But either way, they've got to find a way to, to match themselves back up. And, and you can see that that's almost what happened off a, off a shorter ball. And then they've both gone back together. As you can see here, that, that the player ended up being a little bit closer than his partner. And so this is one of the few times that I would say, if the ball does go into this zone and the player comes across to take it, it is acceptable to switch. Um, ideally, probably the right-hand player could have played that, but it's, it's, it's an acceptable time to do that. Nice Bahada there, like low to the feet. Now that we're going to be seeing more and more split steps, there was a miniature split step there, but we would see a better split step in the future. And then a what I would call the ideal setup volley. Yeah, nice bounce in the middle of the court, second bounce by that back glass. And, and we are currently doing a, a volley challenge month, which, which Jordan here is, is taking advantage of. He's doing a great job. He's sent in a lot of videos with his volley, but we focus a lot on the punchiness of a volley and the set, how a setup volley can be so incredibly effective. And that's exactly what he's done here and won the point with that setup volley, which is what we're trying to, to get all of our members to start doing. So, um, you know, Good job to these guys, fantastic paddle point. And uh, yeah, I think that it was really beneficial to, to go through this, not only with him, which I, we've already done, but also for you uh, at home. So we covered the match analysis there. Let us know down in the comments what you felt and if any of that rang true to your game. I'm going to put a video on this side of more match analysis. But if you want to instantly start getting feedback on your shots, that is exactly why we have our platform. So if you sign up today, I will see you in the community.